Moments after entering the courtroom, Ohio school shooter T.J. Lane took off his shirt. Underneath was a T-shirt with the word killer handwritten on it. It was similar to what he was wearing when police arrested him in February of 2012 after he opened fire in the Chardon High School cafeteria in northeastern Ohio. Lane killed three students and injured three others, and he pleaded guilty last month. When given a chance to speak, the 18-year-old Lane turned to the victim's families, made an obscene gesture with his finger, and used profanity. Crying could be heard, and people were visibly upset. Lane smirked as a prosecutor called him an evil person. A mother of one of the teens who survived addressed Lane directly. You're really lucky there's so many police in this room right now. You could smile all you want. The judge sentenced Lane to life in prison without parole. He was not eligible for the death penalty because he was a minor at the time of the shooting. Thomas Michael Lane the third, commonly known as T.J. Lane, was born on September 19, 1984, in Chardin, Ohio, to parents Sarah Nolan and Thomas Lane, Jr. From an early age, Lane's family environment was hectic. Just days before his first birthday, his mother was arrested for domestic violence against his father. This incident marked the beginning of a series of legal troubles. A few months later, she faced additional charges for similar offenses. According to police reports, Thomas Lane, Jr. alleged that Sarah Nolan had bitten and punched him during altercations, highlighting a pattern of violence within the household. T.J. Lane's father was taken into custody, alleging that T.J.'s mother struggled with alcoholism and exhibited violent, reckless behavior. Although the couple eventually reconciled, their relationship was filled with chaos. Just one day before T.J.'s third birthday, his father was arrested for assaulting his mother. When deputies arrived at their home, Lane's father resisted arrest while the officers attempted to subdue him, ultimately resulting in a court order requiring him to stay away from TJ and his mother. A few years later, TJ's father was incarcerated for a serious offense involving the beating and suffocation of a woman, whom he had met shortly after his relationship with Sarah Nolan. During this time, he also had two more children. By the time TJ was three years old, he was placed in the care of his grandparents who were described as loving and supportive individuals. Despite the instability at home, TJ was generally regarded as a good kid. He was active in sports, playing on the basketball team, and he attended church regularly. Known for his quiet demeanor, he rarely revealed the difficulties he faced in his home life. TJ had interests in anime and primitive hunting, showing he had a typical childhood, despite his difficult upbringing. During high school, T.J. Lane underwent a significant transformation in his appearance, adopting a goth style. He faced frequent teasing about his hair and clothing, but typically reacted by looking down and laughing it off. As high school progressed, T.J. began experiencing difficulties at home. At 15, deputies were called to his residence when his uncle, Adam Nolan, then 16, and a longtime heroin addict, returned home and exhibited erratic behavior. A confrontation erupted between Adam and TJ's brother-in-law, John Brunering. As Adam began to lose the fight, TJ intervened, restraining John while Adam struck him. This incident led to the police being called, and TJ was placed in a juvenile detention center where he faced assault charges. After his release, TJ quickly found himself in trouble again when he punched a classmate and placed him in a chokehold just a few days later. As a result, he was sent to Lake Academy, an alternative school designed for at-risk youth, many of whom struggled with addiction or faced abuse at home. At Lake Academy, TJ attempted to improve his behavior, becoming more withdrawn and avoiding interactions with others. He even managed to start a relationship with a girl from a youth group and spent summers camping with his biological father. However, TJ's relationship was rocky. He was a jealous and possessive boyfriend which ultimately led to his girlfriend breaking up with him and eventually beginning to date Russell King Jr. Following this, TJ became angry and began threatening Russell. The two exchanged messages over the phone and arranged to fight. Some students reported that Lane had even taken up weightlifting to prepare for his fight with King. TJ Lane obtained a gun by stealing it from his uncle the day before the shooting. During a visit, Lane took the 22 caliber Ruger handgun which was stored without ammunition. He also took a second magazine and some bullets. That night, he loaded both magazines, 
one of which he inserted into the gun and concealed the firearm in his backpack, intending to use it in the shooting the next day. Lane's decision to steal the gun and plan the attack emerged over a brief period, with him stating later that he had been contemplating the shooting for about two weeks. Before classes started, Chardon High School opened its doors and many students gathered in the cafeteria. Some used the time to have breakfast, while others waited for transportation to partner institutions. T.J. Lane arrived at Chardon High School around 7.30 a.m. and headed directly to the cafeteria, where he opened fire on a group of students, firing 10 rounds. Coach Frank Hall and teacher Joseph Ricci immediately reacted, rushing toward Lane despite the danger. Lane fled the scene, shooting another female student on his way out, before leaving the building and running toward his car, parked on Wooden Road. Police arrested him a short time later near his vehicle. The shooting left five students hospitalized, three of whom succumbed to their injuries within two days. Among the deceased was 17-year-old Russell King Jr., the boy Lane was originally supposed to fight. The other victims were 16-year-olds Daniel Parmator and Demetrius Hewlin. 17-year-old Nick Walsack was shot multiple times in the arm, neck, cheek, and back, leaving him paralyzed from the waist down though he survived after treatment at Hillcrest Hospital. Another victim, 18-year-old Joy Rickers, was discharged from the hospital the day after the shooting. Nate Muller, who wasn't hospitalized, was grazed on his right ear by a bullet, but avoided serious injury. Student witnesses reported that TJ appeared to target Russell King Jr. directly, suggesting that King was the first to be shot among the students at his table. There were also rumors of a prior warning about the attack being shared on Twitter though these claims were never verified. In the aftermath, media outlets uncovered a Facebook profile belonging to a user named TJ Lane. Although the profile didn't list a location, many of the user's friends were associated with Chardon. One disturbing post from December 30th, 2011, stood out with its final line reading, Die, all of you. Lane later claimed that the post was written as part of a class assignment in a comment dated January 20th, 2012. On February 28, 2012, T.J. Lane attended a detention hearing at the Giaga County Juvenile Court in Chardon. Since Lane was under 18, he was initially treated as a juvenile, following standard legal procedures. However, prosecutors can seek to charge minors as adults in severe cases. After the hearing, prosecutor Dave Joyce announced plans to pursue adult charges against Lane including three counts of aggravated murder, along with additional charges related to the shooting. On June 8, 2012, T.J. Lane entered a plea of not guilty to the charges against him. His bail was set at $1 million, and arrangements were made for his transfer from juvenile detention to county jail on June 18. On February 26, 2013, Lane changed his plea to guilty accepting responsibility for all charges in his indictment. During his sentencing on March 19, 2013, Lane was given three consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. In a disturbing display, he removed his dress shirt upon entering the courtroom, revealing a white t-shirt with the word killer scrawled across the front in handwritten letters. Throughout the hearing, Lane showed no remorse, smiling and smirking, as the victim's families delivered emotional impact statements. After being sentenced, Lane said to the victim's families in the courtroom, this hand that pulled the trigger that killed your sons now masturbates to the memory. Fuck all of you, while giving the middle finger to attendees. Many believe that TJ Lane's anger stemmed from the death of his uncle, Adam Nolan, who died from a heroin overdose just a month before Lane's sentencing at the age of 19. During the first 18 months of his incarceration, Lane occupied his time by playing with Pokemon cards, using drugs, and disregarding prison rules. He attended school, but rarely completed his assignments, leading to disciplinary actions against him on multiple occasions. His infractions included urinating on walls and attempts to give himself tattoos. Additionally, several prison guards reported that Lane was among the smelliest inmates, as he consistently refused to shower or use deodorant. On September 11, 2014, T.J. Lane escaped from the Allen Oakwood Correctional Institution, 
Lane was 19 at the time and had been incarcerated for just over two years. He escaped alongside two other inmates, Clifford Opperud, who was serving a sentence for aggravated burglary and kidnapping, and Lindsay Bruce, who was serving a life sentence for murder. The details of their escape remain somewhat unclear, but it was reported that the two inmates managed to flee the facility in the evening, around 7.40 p.m. They were last seen wearing blue prison uniforms, prompting an immediate manhunt by law enforcement. In the wake of their escape, local residents were cautioned to be vigilant and advised not to pick up hitchhikers or interact with strangers. Bruce was quickly captured afterward, but Lane and Opperud remained at large. The following day, authorities recaptured Lane near a home in Lima, not far from where he had fled. Opperud was captured about three hours later. Following his recapture, T.J. Lane and his accomplice were moved to the Ohio State Penitentiary, a supermax facility located in Youngstown, Ohio. Lane faced strict confinement measures, spending 23 hours a day in his cell, with only one hour allocated for recreation each day. In March 2016, Lane was transferred to the Southern Ohio Correctional Facility, a maximum security prison situated in Lucasville, where he currently remains as of the time of this recording.